what up it's september 3rd this uh this vlog that i'm doing right now it's about like a couple of people that i left out in the last vlog that i just did a couple of days ago i have forgot to mention them so i'm just gonna do a whole this is this video is just dedicated to them it's a few it's uh i'm gonna start with the earliest one john anthony uh i mean no not john anthony uh anthony johnson and then john kosor and then uh john saffin uh samuel seawall and then another guy named john punch who was the very first black american to be uh given a sentence to where he he'll have to serve life in servitude i was gonna say slavery but i'm gonna touch on why you know what i'm saying he's not the first to be enslaved based on definition itself so those are the people that I forgot to bring up in the last vlog. So I'm just going to bring them up in this one. I said I was going to bring them up in the, you know, during chapter two. But I don't see how it's going to be any relevance to that. Because in the beginning of the chapter two, basically the Civil War has already started. You know what I'm saying? So everything is pretty much going to continue from that point. So I'm like, it just makes sense just to do a whole separate video and bring them up during this video. But it's, <coughs> it, it does bring in something else to mind. That's not related to the chapter as far as like uh, an additional relevance to all four of these key persons. This is about 2018 and 2019. I'm going to shout out the Instagram page. Big shout out to Shorty. No offense. But I like old girl. She be having like a lot of good posts about health. Uh, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of religion, some history, just all kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Her name is The Black Swan. She's a uh, black and I believe Arab. She likes to say Asian, but ethnically speaking, she's Arab and black or whatnot. But I like her. Big shout outs to Shorty, by the way. I ain't being funny. But as far as like 2018 or 2019, I forget the exact year. I didn't go look it up. But uh, she had a post that she put up on July the 4th. Again, between 2018 and 2019. But she was talking about her preferring june 10th over july 4th and she got you know vocal about you know why she doesn't necessarily fall in line as far as like uh the symbolic meaning of the fourth of july and how like the forefathers you know kept blacks in slavery and all this type of stuff which is cool she gave her opinion she was like you know semi scolding but speaking honestly from her point of view long story short when i put a little comment or whatever then some other guy I forget his name you know he he replied to the comment that I posted and he was talking about like the he said uh and I believe it was John Kosor but he was saying like this is the first person that owned slaves in America and they were black so we went back and forth and then we kind of snowballed to all kind of stuff but that was like the essence of the discussion or whatever but this brings me into mind because like the history of these four persons is very fucking relevant to that discussion that me and that guy had he ended up blocking me by the way I believe he did because I I can't see his comments, you know what I'm saying? Like I I documented the discussion because I thought it was a pretty dis good discussion and then I put it on my Facebook page. But when I get to go back on to the original post from her, I don't see his, you know what I'm saying? His posts, his responses to mine because we went back and forth for a while, for a few hours, you know what I'm saying? But luckily I had documented that, but no disrespect to do. I don't understand why he blocked me. We were just going back and forth, but anyway, that comes to my mind. I'm gonna speak on that further why in a second, but I wanna go and go through the history and explain these pe persons. <clears throat> I'm gonna start off with uh, Anthony Johnson first. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, when I was gonna bring them up in the first chapter that I just did, I was, out of all of them, it was more so focusing on John Kasor and uh samuel seawall but it's you know like i say this is relevant anthony johnson is just as relevant as the rest for this particular vlog but anyway i don't speak on him now all of these persons all of these black persons they are from africa they're from angola right so just for the sake of the sake of argument i don't like to use this term because i think it's sort of racist but just for the sake of argument they would be quote unquote Negroid, not mulatto, not light skin, not any other quote unquote variation of blackness. 
they were quote unquote Negroid. Or to use Beyonce's words, even though like I'm still struggling with it in my head. And if I knew somebody, man, if I knew like one of her butlers or something, I'd be like, hey, ask old girl, you know, what exactly did she mean by that? I ain't trying to challenge it. I just want to know exactly where she's coming from. But I forget the name of the song. It could have been Lemonade. I don't know. I forget. But I remember when I heard the song, I heard she said, you mix that Negro with that Creole. You know what I'm saying? It was a decent song. I'm like, hmm, that's a little interesting way to look at it. A little interesting label. But anyway, just for the sake of arguments, I will reference that. They will be quote unquote Negro or whatnot. Now, as far as John, uh, John Anthony, no, nah, Anthony Johnson, and I freaking hope I'm not saying his name incorrect, but yeah, Anthony Johnson, as far as him, he was born exactly in 1600. He was one of the first black people to come here to America. Again, him and others that were from Angola. The year that they actually first imported Africans here would be uh 1619 it was about like 20 of them and all of them came from angola as well now that is definitely true that's not an exaggeration because they have a name of one person a lady by the name of angela by the way these were uh not slaves they were indentured servants so anyway he bought he was born in 1600 he came here to america to virginia to the colony of virginia in 1621 he was an indentured servant he served for a little bit when he finally uh ended his contract you know he got the promises of land money or whatnot he ended up becoming a very rich individual i think at the peak of his life he owned like 300 plus acres or whatnot but <laughs> as far as him you know he ended up getting enough wealth to where he owned five indentured servants one of them for sure was black it's a guy by the name of john uh kosor the fella that i mentioned earlier right another quote-unquote negroid but uh dude his contract was in um i forget exactly what year but basically like when his contract ended you know uh anthony johnson tried to you know trick him into remaining in servitude or whatnot so they ended up going to court for that uh long story short uh john kosor won his case now i thought that was pretty odd because after he won his case he later on served un under somebody else in servitude this guy it was a white guy his name was robert parker this is why it's fucking weird uh, Anthony Johnson ended up suing Robert Parker. Now, this is exactly what the fuck I read. He ended up suing Robert Parker, and he gained John Kosor back. And from that point onward, John Corso was ordered to serve in servitude for life. Again, literally, not a slave, just serving in servitude for life. Now, I'm like, how the fuck? Okay, if John Kosor won that case that means it's legitimate by the time he get you know work for uh uh uh, uh the other guy or whatnot robert parker it's legitimate how was anthony johnson able to put in a lawsuit and regain john kosor back in servitude for life for whatever type of violations they mentioned nothing like that i thought that was quite odd but that's exactly how the history goes or whatnot. So that's John Anthony. Uh, well, I'm going to go a little further and talk about the rest of his life. Why not? I want to say, like, later on after that, around uh, 1657, you know, he had a neighbor. Because he had moved somewhere else. I think by this point he had moved to Maryland. But it, he had a white neighbor, and I forget the first name of this neighbor, but his last name was uh, Scarborough. This guy wrote like a fake letter claiming that, you know, Anthony Johnson owed him money or is in debt to him in some type of way, shape, or form. And then he forged that guy's signature. Now, as far as Anthony Johnson, he was illiterate, so he couldn't read. He really didn't contest it. That guy ended up winning the case or whatnot, and they 
wrongfully gave him 100 I think it was 150 125 acres of land from um, Anthony Johnson so it was a little bit of karma and payback for him but I thought that was fucking down that was a sign of racism even that far back then because I thought it was you know it's, it's obviously interesting that you have a black person that served in servitude or was an indentured servant for a certain period get out rightfully get his claim to you know some type of tract of land or whatnot and then he worked that became richer or whatnot but you know that that's that's interesting that he had a fellow black person that under him later on as well and even apply some of these little slick tactics to try to get him back in servitude and which he ended up doing which is like i say somewhat uh uh ethical you could say because i don't understand how legally he was able to sue to get John Kosor back in the first place. So that was an interesting dynamic within a broader subcontext when you think about it from a racial standpoint. But later on, he ended up going through the same thing as well by this white guy being able to just basically arbitrarily make a fucking claim and then get granted, win his case and get land after that. Now, even uh, following this, because like, like I say, this happened in uh, 1657, even following that, you know, and the, like I say, I don't know about what year exactly because he died in 1730. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, not 1730. Uh, that's John Kosor I'm thinking about. John Kosor was born in 1652 and died in 1630. But as far as like uh, Anthony Johnson, a little later on, because he died in 1670, so I don't want to mix it up, but. You know, he had a family or whatnot, and, you know, like I say, he gained a certain amount of wealth. By the time he died, his wealth ended up being transferred over to a white person. They ended up in, you know, a little legal dispute, you could say. And I believe they said it was the Council of Virginia, but whatever higher authority at that time granted a white person as the heir to his, you know, accumulated wealth instead of his family. And a part of the reason at the time was because he was black so he didn't have any type of rights so he still ended up you know what i'm saying uh being done bogusly at the end as well and also by some you know by the but i think it was by uh 1730 as well you know his his family history kind of disappeared from the annals of time as far as american history as well so it was a lot that I, you know, that could be said about that. But just to keep it simple, that's 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 just him as far as his life. Now, uh, the other guy who was actually the first person to be sentenced to serve a life under servitude was John Poach or John Punch, actually. Now, I don't know exactly when he was born, but as far as the circumstances of his life, that makes him interesting and relevant to that part, portion of history as well. As far as this, as far as the 17th century is concerned. He was sentenced in 1641, exactly, and uh, possibly July, but definitely 1641. Him and two other guys, two other white guys, they had escaped where they was from. They attempted to go to Maryland as well. Uh, they all got caught, but as far as like the two white guys, they were given lesser sentences. So like, they were just... Uh, as far as like the original time that they had in servitude, that was extended pretty much. That's it. As far as John Punch himself, he ended up being sentenced to life in servitude. So that's the history with him. Now, uh, Samuel Seawall, you know, I did mention him in the last blog, but I didn't really go through the whole entirety of his story as well. Again, he was a judge in Massachusetts. Uh, he ended up, you know, trading opinions, you know, public, like publishing opinions between himself and then another guy who was also a judge. His name was John Saffin. Now, he was, you know, purported to be racist, very aggressive, and he ended up in court quite a few times because of his personality based on what I read or whatnot. Uh, he had somebody that was an indentured servant as well, a guy by the name of Adam, a black guy. Now, Adam was assigned from 1690 it was supposed to be seven years 1694 up until 1701 by the end of his term john saffin you know 
try to have it extended into a further notice, basically. So, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 this is a little difficult, too, because as far as the details they provided as I'm reading this on Wikipedia, of course, it was just, it was really similar to John Anthony and John Kosor. It's like certain things didn't make sense. For example, this is how the story happens. John Saffin and his guy Samuel Seawall had been beefing even before 1701. They was going back and forth. As far as the document, the first published early, you know, saying public opinion against slavery, that was in 1700, right? It was called uh, The Selling of Joseph. And that was from Samuel Seawall. And he was basically expressing his opinion against bondage of any type of people. But in that particular document, he was talking about black folks, slavery. He felt like it was morally backwards and uh, every human being deserved liberty or whatnot. Uh, what else? Yeah, that was pretty much the essence of his whole little argument. And uh, then now it was, I think it was something else he said. Uh, it was morally wrong to keep any persons in bondage. Of course, he referenced the Bible and Ethiopians and all that type of stuff. But but uh, the other guy, John Saffin, had published like two replies basically to him. Now, this is 1700 when this, this was published. The other guy, Adam, the black guy, his contract wasn't up until 1701. But as far as what I read, you know, saying Wikipedia, of course... They didn't go into like what was happening during that whole episode leading up to the end of his contract, aside from a dispute as far as John Saffin trying to keep him bondage under that contract, trying to extend it. The only intimation that they provided, they was like, uh, as far as like when they ended up in court, which is weird too. I'm going to get on that in a second. As far as like when they ended up in court, they was like, uh, a part of John Saffin's complaint was that this guy didn't serve quietly luxuriously like like he was being funny with the language but it was, he was basically trying to say that this guy Adams actually was remissful in his duty his he didn't serve his duty his contract to his completion it was incomplete as far as like the his his, his work ethic itself that's what he said that was the intimation but again as far as like 1700 this being published and Adams being a inspiration for that, that means this dispute was going on even before 1701 when his contract ended because they mentioned how Adams escaped from John Saffin's farm or whatnot in March, March the 1st of 1701. That's the year his contract was supposed to be over. But after that, after he escaped during that month, John Saffin and Samuel Seawall ended up at seawall's residence and they was arguing back and forth and they came to the understanding that adam's case would be heard in bristol county in massachusetts now i'm thinking like how the fuck if he escaped already i mean they didn't say like whether he had got they didn't say like when he got caught that was the weird part that's i was trying to get the contact the, the back context to context to it like trying to understand like okay if he was at his house but the man had escaped by this time when did they catch him like how could how can you come to an agreement with your adversary as far as these two judges and say okay yeah his case will be heard in bristol county but if he escaped i mean they they, they didn't catch him by that time obviously by that by the time both of them had that conversation so what on what grounds were you so sure that it was going to be a case if he escaped again they didn't provide details as far as when did adams get caught and again, going further, they say uh, the case started August 1st of that same year, 1701. Now, they went into a little background as far as John Saffin, which is kind of like, again, some shit, shit's just not corroborating. They said like he had put in like a, you know, he put in the word to try to be like a, a high judge within Virginia, right? Uh... Not Virginia, I'm tripping. He put in the word to be a high judge in, in Massachusetts, right? Uh, at the colony of Massachusetts. He eventually was granted. But they were saying, like, 
some judges will hear other cases from lower courts in tangent with these judges or something like that as well. And this guy, you know, he ended up being appointed as a as a judge of, of, of the high court. But he also tried to like he may have slicked in a juror be for like the, the the Adams case or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Again, they still didn't provide the background as far as like when did he get caught, et cetera, da 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 da. So the Adams case came up eventually and it was heard in Bristol. Again, see all that background information that's missing, but whatever. It came up and it ended up in Bristol. He lost or whatnot. As far as Samuel Seawall, he appealed the case for John Adams. The case was sustained. And by 1703, I mean, not John Adams, Adams. And by 1703, Adams had finally won the case because he actually was able to speak his side of the story. Therefore, he became free. Now, that's how that history happened. Now, going back to the original, like the person I brought up as far as the, the Black Swan Diaries from uh, Instagram. And again, shout out to Shorty. I like her a lot. She has a lot of good posts. She got good content, basically, all around. And she's a ballerina. That's what I forgot to mention. But as far as on her post. That guy that I was going back and forth with, you know, the, ar the, the argument he was making, he was still wrong in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Because legally, like none of these guys were slaves. You know, John, uh, I mean, Anthony Johnson, John Kosor, Adams himself, you know what I'm saying? Just, I'm going to hit it literally. Adams himself, uh, even John Punch. None of these guys were slaves. They were indentured servants. Some of them, a couple of them you know, ended up being sentenced for life under indentured servitude. But formally speaking, as far as codification and promulgation within a fucking law, they were not slaves. Slavery didn't become legal until 1661. That's when the law was put in place. You know what I mean? For uh, a free person, a free black person as well. To, um, Cause I don't think it was just like uh, singly, just for for the purpose. Of, I think that was like a general thing, but blacks obviously was included for for a free person to own slaves. That wasn't until 1661. So legally, none of these guys before that, although there are circumstances, a couple of them, such as John Punch, for example, and John Kosor, even though their circumstances were you know unfortunate, legally they still wasn't slaves. They were just serving a sentence for life. So you can almost call that imprisonment, not literal slavery. Slavery. Again, that wasn't put into play as far as a law formally until 1661. And then the next year after that in 1662, that's when, you know, uh, it was also codified within within uh, Virginia. Yeah, within Virginia, the colony of Virginia, by the way, that uh, whatever, whoever, whatever status that your mother had is the status that you're pretty much considered once you're born so that's it you know what i'm saying so i thought that was relevant by the way shout out to that guy you know what I'm saying if you ever see this unblock me or whatever you can comment on this video as well so that's the history with all four of those persons again i didn't know how i was going to kind of tie them to chapter two i feel like i'd be going backwards and i wouldn't be able to make them relevant unless like something comes comes up to where i have to reference something in the past and then tie them to that you know what i'm saying i don't i, I don't for, foresee how i'm gonna be able to do that in part two so i decided to make this you know completely separate or whatever so that's the history of all those persons um as far as like uh the population i do know like in 1640 it was 150 black people 1650 it was 100 and, no 300 blacks there then in 1680, it was about 3,000. And by 1704, there were, what was it? 1704, about 10,000 black people. Now, again, one more thing as far as Anthony Johnson. Again, throughout his life, he owned five persons. Just based off the language of what I read, even though some of it is incomplete, but that's fine. He owned five indentured persons. They never said five fucking uh, slaves. You know what I'm saying? Because he died in 1670. So that law put in place nine years before that's a possibility. But just factually speaking, based on our 
what I read, he had five indentured servants. So again, that's about it. You know what I'm saying? Got that out the way. Now, as far as like chapter two, yes, I'm going to do thorough research on that one. That's the next one coming because I'm going to do this whole entire book. And again, get back to the other stuff such as uh, Nestorius, the original the, the origins of an Islamic state, you know what I'm saying? All kind of stuff. And then all the blogs, even between, you know, as I get back to those blogs, because I'm going to start doing stuff simultaneously, just so I don't take too long to get some of this content out, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, in between that, man, I got a whole bunch of other stuff.